my story begins in the hot summer of 1988. Fifth grade had just let out and I was looking forward to a long summer of staying out late with my friends or staying up very late at night after my parents had gone to bed and watching whatever racy shows or movies HBO happened to be playing at the time. Unfortunately, all of this was brought to a crashing halt when my mother informed me that we were going to be moving. Now, I was deeply opposed to this. I mean, I'd be leaving behind all of my friends and also a whole summer's worth of playing and doing whatever I wanted. Instead, I would be stuck with the dreaders of packing and moving. Not something most kids want to be bothered with. Well, my mother told me, basically, tough shit, I'll make new friends. Well, with that, the next few weeks were spent packing, and as far as I was concerned, my entire summer was ruined. But the day did come where we did finally get to the new house, and I was actually pretty surprised. The house was a lot bigger than what we were used to. It was a two-story house with a complete unfinished basement. So compared to all the other places that we had lived in the past, this place was massive. And it was in an older part of town with a much nicer neighborhood. But for the purpose of this accounting, I will simply refer to the house as the house on Vine Street. So after a couple more weeks, we were finally settled in and moved in. And I was bound and determined to salvage what I could of summer vacation. So I ventured out into the neighborhood to see if there was anything I could find to do or any other kids to potentially hang out with. Now, much to my disappointment, I wasn't having very much success at first finding any new friends in this neighborhood. All the kids around there seemed to be oh either way too old or way too <laughs> young. But after a couple of days, I happened to stumble upon this kid who was in his front yard raking leaves. I went up and I started to talk to him. For the sake of this, we'll just call him Dell. Well, it wasn't very long until Dell and I, whether it be the lack of other kids our age, soon became very good friends. So Dell and I were standing in his front yard kind of laughing and joking and making small talk when very abruptly he pulled his inhaler out of his pocket took a long pull off of it and then pointed over at the house that I had just moved into and asked me why we had moved there. I was pretty confused by his question and when I questioned him as to what he meant he just kind of shrugged and told me that he didn't know why but for some reason nobody ever seemed to live there for very long. The most he had ever seen anybody live there was about a year and a half. Well I didn't really think about it and kind of shrugged that off. I was just happy to have found a new friend. But if I knew then what I know now, I would have taken his statement as a warning. Well, it didn't take me very long to realize something was seriously wrong with this house. I mean, the walls just seemed to have this very heavy atmosphere about them. There was always this sense of foreboding. Like, if you turn a corner, you just knew someone was going to be standing there waiting for you. And if you were in a room by yourself, it didn't matter. You did not feel like you were alone. It feels like there are eyes constantly staring at you, watching you everywhere you go, everything you do. And it seems like they're just out of the range of your vision or constantly peeking around the side of the corner. You would think you'd see something in the corner of your eye, and when you'd look over, there's nothing there, but you know you saw something move. And it always feels like there's someone right behind you. The hair on the back of your neck constantly stands up, and you know it, you know they're there. But when you turn around, there's no one. You never feel alone. And at night, it's even worse. Well, eventually I got to the point where I had to ask my parents about this. And when I confronted them, they just kind of shrugged and told me that it was because we're in a new home. And that was bound to make me a bit nervous. But if I gave it enough time, eventually I would get used to the place and everything would be fine. Well, 
here's the thing. When I looked them in their eyes, I knew they were lying to me. I knew they could feel it too. Well, over the course of the next several weeks, things got progressively worse. Just the very nature of the house became more oppressive, much darker, heavy, and it seemed to weigh on everybody. Everybody was constantly fighting, constantly arguing, especially my mother and my stepfather. Over the course of the next several weeks, their fights became increasingly volatile to where they were fighting every day. And sometimes I actually thought they were fighting merely because they were there. And everybody was exhausted. It didn't seem like anybody was getting any sleep at night, especially me. You see, one of the reasons for this was my bedroom. You see, my room and my parents' room were both upstairs. But my room in particularly terrified me. I mean, I was absolutely afraid of it. Now, at first, I wasn't, but gradually, more and more, I became more afraid. You see, first of all, it was always so cold in there. I mean, during the summer months when we first moved in, it was cold up there. The upstairs was always cold, but my room in particular was freezing all the time. We couldn't really figure out why, but it was just one of those things I had to deal with. That was my bedroom. Now, one of the other reasons is my room was, though there were a lot of them in the house, but especially in my room, one of those places where you always constantly, never endingly felt watched. You were never alone in there, even when you were alone. But the thing that terrified me the most in my room was my closet. Now, I know a lot of kids are actually afraid of their closets at some point in time in their life, but I was at the age where I had really outgrown that and had outgrown that quite a few years ago. And actually, quite the contrary at first, I was actually fascinated by my closet. You see, it was a huge walk-in closet, and I had never seen anything like that. I actually thought it was pretty cool. It was like having a whole other room inside of my room. But very quickly, I learned to be afraid of it. I learned to be terrified of it and to stay away from it because I'm not going to say something lived in there, but something definitely existed in there. It dwelled in there. That's where it stayed. And at night, that's when it came out. You see, it was gradual at first. It started from inside of that closet. Every night as I'd be laying there in bed, from inside of the closet, I could hear this crunching, this grinding noise every night. And then it would start clawing, scratching and scraping from the other side of the door. Just clawing, grinding and scraping like something's in there trying to get out. Now usually I was too terrified to get up and go and check, but one night, I mustered my courage and I went in there and I looked. Nothing was in there. And as soon as I opened the door, it stopped. Well, I closed the door, I got back in my bed, started to doze off, and then it started again. The scratching, the clawing, the grinding, the crunching. And every night when I tried to go to sleep, this would happen. And anytime I would get up to take a look, it would stop and nothing was in there. But as soon as I closed the door and lay back in my bed, the scratching, the clawing, the crunching would start again. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. Whatever this thing was got exceedingly aggressive over the next few weeks. I got to a point where I kind of got used to the scratching sounds. And for some reason, they weren't every single night. But I think that's because whatever this thing was, it was saving itself, building up its strength. So that way it could perform much more horrible acts inside of my room. One night I was laying there in bed and I was reading and I began to doze off when I heard 
something in my room move, like hit the floor very abruptly and very suddenly. All this kind of woke me up a little bit and I looked around and I saw that my can of spray deodorant, which was across the room on my dresser, was now laying in the middle of my floor. Well, I kind of looked around, had my suspicions, but I just decided to chalk it up to it fell over. It fell off of my dresser. So I got up and I put it back on my dresser and I tried to start reading again. Well, again, I started to nod off and doze off. And again, I heard this noise of something hitting the floor. And again, I was startled awake and I looked over and again, it was laying in the middle of the floor. Well, now I was actually getting kind of freaked out because I knew there was no way this thing fell off of my dresser two times in a row. Something was doing it. Something was moving it. Well, I again summoned my courage as I had done before and yelled at it. Fuck you! Told it to stop. Whatever it was, knock it off. Leave me alone. I wasn't interested in it. I didn't want to have anything to do with it. Just leave me the fuck alone. And with that, I shut off my light and I went to sleep. Well, it wasn't very long until I was jolted away by something hitting me in the chest. Well, I, I reeled in horror, reached over, turned on my light to see what it was, what it was that had hit me. And when I looked down, I was absolutely horrified to see that it was my can of spray deodorant. It had come off of the dresser on the other side of the room and had hit me in the chest while I was laying there in bed. That was it. I was, I was absolutely terrified at that point. I knew now whatever this was in here, it had the power, the ability, no longer to just make noises, but to actually move things. So it wasn't very long until school had actually started back up. And I was quite thankful for this because it meant that much less time I actually had to spend in the house. Well, at first I didn't really have any friends other than Dell, but Dell, being from the area, introduced me to some other kids that he knew and we all eventually became friends well this is when i got introduced to role-playing games ad and d advanced dungeons and dragons well we had been playing this for several weeks and we decided to start holding it at my house because my house was bigger and i had more space than everybody else well one of my friends in the group it was always kind of loud very crass we strayed off the topic of the game and got onto the subject of my house and about it potentially being haunted. I had never actually confirmed to them that the house was actually haunted and things were happening in the house, but I always just kind of nonchalantly said that I had my suspicions and sometimes weird things happened or I heard things. Well, he stood up and started challenging whatever was in my house to do something to move him, make noises, whatever. Now this made me immediately nervous and actually kind of scared me that he might wind up pissing it off. So I kind of asked him to, you know, shut the hell up and sit down. But he just kept going. He kept challenging it, yelling at it, getting louder and louder and louder. Well, I felt something clip me on the shoulder. And then I saw his eyes get really wide as he dove to the ground on the other side of the table from me. My penny jar exploded against the wall where his head had once been. Now here's the thing that you have to understand. My penny jar was upstairs in my room on my bedside table. It had to lift up off of my table, turn right, go across my room, turn right again out my door, turn left down the hallway, go down the hall, turn right down the stairs, turned right again into the dining room where we were playing, and then straight on towards his face. Well, nobody said anything to one another for a while, and eventually my friends gathered their things and said that they were going home. They never came back over after that. Well, I had long since given up trying to beg and plead with my parents and get them to understand that Things were happening to me and something was seriously wrong with this house. But luckily for me, it didn't take very long for them to get drawn in as well. 
One particular evening, my mother and I were sitting downstairs in the living room. I was on the couch watching television, and she was in the chair next to the couch reading her book, as she often did. Well, as we sat there, we began to hear this thudding and thumping and stomping sounds coming from upstairs. Then we were also hearing these conversations. They were whispered in hush and you couldn't really make out what they were saying, but it sounded like there were several people up there having a conversation. Well, we both kind of looked at each other in horror and I'm sure I had a look on my face like, I told you so. Well, she got up and she ran upstairs to investigate. Well, I sat there listening for her for what felt like forever. And then eventually, I heard her scream. <coughs> then she began to yell, who are you? Who are you? And then she ran downstairs, hysterical, crying. Well, I started asking her and pleading with her what happened. And to this day, she won't tell me what happened to her up there, what she saw. But she saw something something happened because it wasn't shortly after that she started working nights i think just so she didn't have to be in the house at night well the next event actually involved the entire family we had just got done eating dinner and i had just finished helping my mother clean up the kitchen and put all the dishes away and we had all went into the living room to just kind of watch some tv and relax before my stepfather and I were going to go to bed and my mother was going to go to work. When very abruptly and suddenly we were all just frozen into place from shock from this noise from the kitchen. We didn't know what it was. We, we were just, we were stunned. Well, everybody got up and we ran into the kitchen and were completely horrified by what we saw. The refrigerator had been tipped over into the middle of the floor. Every dish, pot, pan, plate, bowl, everything had been pulled out of the, the cabinets and was smashed all across the kitchen floor, as well as the drawers with the silverware and such had also been pulled out and just dumped in the middle of the floor. Upon seeing all of this, my mother just broke down. She cracked. She, she couldn't handle it, and she just began sobbing and yelling, I can't take this, I can't take this. And my stepfather began cussing. Well, I started in with the whole, you know, this is what I'm talking about, C, 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 and immediately my stepfather spun around and started pointing at me, telling me, shut the fuck up. Because apparently the new rule of the house was we weren't going to talk about these things. And from that point forward, we didn't. Now this last event that I'm going to tell you about is not because it was the last thing to happen in the house, because it wasn't. And there was also several other things that proceeded before this. But the reason why I'm going to tell you this last is because this is by far one of the worst events that happened to me inside of the house. This is the one that 25 plus years later, I really still haven't gotten over. I, I still have nightmares about it. It still freaks me out. It still scares the hell out of me. And it's the one that I don't think I've really fully dealt with. So, yeah. Anyway, as cliched as it sounds, I know, but it was a dark and stormy night. The thunderstorm had actually been raging all day long and had gone well into the night and really didn't seem like it was going to stop. It just kept getting stronger and stronger and stronger as the night went on. Well, to make matters even worse, as I had said, my mother uh, works nights now and my stepfather was away on one of his yearly week-long hunting excursions so he wasn't gonna be back for a while so for the first time I was completely alone in this house in the middle of the night 
well. Normally, I hated, I mean, absolutely loathed being up in my bedroom. But at this point, I had gotten a television. And so I had my Nintendo hooked up to that. So I, I did spend a lot of time playing that. Now, the other reason why I was in my room is because the downstairs was just way too open. I mean, I was completely alone in the house and there was just, there was too much room, too many corners, too many shadows, too many nooks where I just felt like things could get at me. So I thought being up in my room, a much smaller area, was a much more sound and tactical decision. And that's when I started to think that way. Well, I had been up there in my room for many hours playing my Nintendo and kind of listening to the storm and the power flickering every now and then. Well, eventually I got tired and decided that I was going to go to bed. Now, one of the other things about my room that I hated was the fact that I couldn't sleep with the light on. I couldn't sleep with any light on. Anytime I would try to fall asleep with a light on, because I had a little desk lamp that instead of having the overhead light on, I would try to have that on just to cast a little bit of a, of, of, of a gloomy light throughout the room, just enough for me to see. But anytime I had a light on, Whatever was on my dresser or whatever happened to be just out would always wind up landing right in my chest if I had the light on. And it took me a while to figure it out, but eventually I figured it out. Don't leave the light on or else things hit you when you try to sleep. So begrudgingly, I would turn my light off. Well, I eventually went to sleep and I don't know how long I was asleep, but I knew, I knew somebody was in that room with me and I immediately woke up. Well, there was enough, just a faint glow from the street lights outside in my upstairs window. Barely enough light, but just enough that I saw her at the end of my bed. She was old. She wasn't very tall. But more importantly, her eyes and her face were just complete hatred. I could tell that when she looked at me, she hated me. I was the intruder. I was the one that needed to be gone. And looking at her was just she had nothing but contempt and malice for me, thinking back on it now. And I knew, I knew I had to get away from this, this woman, this thing, this whatever the hell it was. I had to get the hell away because at any moment I just knew she was going to reach out and, and, and strangle me or, or, or hurt me or, or do something. I just knew it. I had to get away from whatever this evil thing was in my room. And that's exactly what it was. It was evil. I could see it in its eyes. That she, it, whatever, was evil and hated me. So I screamed, jumped up, and ran out into the hallway and was going to go downstairs. Now, whether it be coincidence or the universe's sixth sense of irony but the moment I got into that hallway and started to go down it there was this loud clap of thunder and the power went out so there I was in complete darkness fully immersed there was no light in that hallway whatsoever I was in darkness and I knew I knew something was in that darkness with me well I don't know if it was like self-preservance instinct I don't know what it was 
but I immediately threw my back against the wall and just stared out into that darkness. And even though it was thundering and still clashing outside, just the very dark itself seemed to muffle the noise of the storm at this point. All I could hear was my own heartbeat and my own quickened breath until directly to my right, right next to my head, almost directly in my ear, just venom and just hatred. But out of that inky blackness, something said my name. I was terrified. And then it grabbed me. Whatever was there grabbed me. The scream that I let out was barely even human. It was more animalistic than it was person. And I just, my mind began to reel. I, 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 I ran. I began to run. I used my hand along the wall to maneuver down the hallway through the darkness, just going as fast as I could. And even though I was just a few yards from the top of the stairs, it, it, it might have well been a few miles because that's how it felt. I felt like I, I, it just took forever for me to get to those stairs. And no matter how fast I went, I felt like it was right behind me and it was coming on top of me it it was going to be upon me in any moment take me down to the ground and I was never going to get out of that darkness I was going to be there forever well I did get to the stairs I did get down them and somehow I don't know how but I managed to actually maneuver through the house without hitting anything or knocking anything over and I got to the front door and I flung out open the front door and I ran out into the rain and then into the storm I I was done with that house I was not gonna go back in there by myself so I ran around to the other side of the house to the garage where I would often set and wait for my parents to get home because I didn't want to go into the house during, even during the day. So sometimes I would, I would sit there and wait for them to come home. So that's where I went. Well, out of stupidity or morbid curiosity, there was a couple of times where I looked in through the window into the house while I was waiting for the morning to come and waiting for my mom to come home. You gotta remember, this is the days before cell phones. Well, yeah, there in the kitchen, I saw her standing, looking directly at the window right back out at me. Twice I made this, this mistake, and both times she had that same expression on her face, just complete contempt and hatred for me. Well, there wasn't a third time. That was the last time I tried to sleep in my bedroom. From that point forward, for the rest of the time that we lived in that house, I camped downstairs in the dining room in a sleeping bag on the other side of the dining room table. The rest of the time we lived in that house, I slept with my back against the wall. And given the events that had happened in the house, my parents never questioned me.